I think Earth is in hospice. We're driving 200 species to extinction every day, and we're headed there in the not-too-distant future. And so one approach to that is shown here by your typical CEO. <laughs> While the end-of-world scenario will be ripe with unimaginable horrors, we believe that the pre-end period will be filled with unprecedented opportunities for profit. So if you're Lloyd Blankfein and you just love money, if you're Jamie Dimon and your whole goal is to have more money than anybody else on the planet, if you're Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and all those people, the sociopaths who pull the levers of industry, and you find this enjoyable, it's just great, knock yourself out. But for the other 99.999999% of us, including I assume everybody in this room, I propose an alternative path. That maybe instead of chasing the next dollar, Maybe instead of chasing that next box so we can put our, our, our children or our grandchildren through college, maybe instead of planning for the future that never comes, maybe we should pursue love and lives of excellence. Which has very little to do with pursuing money. Socrates spent his entire life asking six questions. Six questions. He was pursuing a life of excellence by asking six questions and pondering people's responses to it. That's it. Six questions. What is courage? What is justice? What is good? What is moderation? What is piety? What is virtue? Six questions. He just asked and asked and asked and asked. And it was like the little kid who asked why repeatedly until finally they killed him. We don't do that to three-year-olds, interestingly. But he was 70, so I guess whatever. <laughs> Enough of that. I was teaching college one day, and I asked the class, what was Socrates' most famous statement? And, and I thought somebody would say, the unexamined life is not worth living, you know, that old song. But no, Sarah, Sarah sitting right about there, Sarah says, I drank what? <laughs> yes, he made that line famous too. <laughs> Even if I'm wrong. Even if all the data presented are wrong, even if all the projections are wrong, even if all the models are wrong, even if that's all wrong, I propose to you that pursuing lives of love and lives of excellence might be a worthy pursuit. If you despair, and I suspect some will, and I know I did, then I, I propose taking into account the words of iconoclastic Tucson-based writer Edward Abbey, action is the antidote to despair. Not because it will save our species, but because it might extend the run of other species. And maybe not even that. Maybe we're all done. Maybe the sixth great extinction event, the only one perpetrated by a single species, maybe that leads to loss of all life on Earth. Maybe we go Venus. Still, if you're damned if you do and damned if you don't, act. What have you got to lose? What have we got to lose? I'm frequently asked the question, actually, I'm almost never asked this question. People ask this question of me pretty frequently. What if he's wrong? What if all of us get to live on a, on a planet <laughs> characterized by infinite growth on a finite planet with no consequences? What if suddenly we find a free energy source and, and we, do, we decide that we're not going to drive any more species to extinction as of this time tomorrow, and so we stop? Well, so what? So what? Does that mean you should pursue money? Does that mean greed is our only God? Does that mean we shouldn't pursue lives of excellence? Even if you live to be a hundred, I'm guessing that on your deathbed, you're not thinking about how many more days you could have gone to work. I'm guessing you're not thinking in your final days, your final hours, your final weeks. I'm, I'm just guessing here that you're not pondering a new pair of shoes. That I need more stuff. So, whereas the relevant question might be, what if he's right? Even if I am wrong, I think a more relevant approach to the way we conduct our lives might be to act as if Earth is in hospice. And when I see people in hospice, when I hear about people in hospice, I don't see people grubbing for another dollar. I see people giving away their wisdom and their time and their material possessions. I don't see people storing up gold 
glitter rouge, as Jackson Brown wrote in 1974. I don't see people doing that at all. I see people who are close to the end acting as if moments matter and remembering the moments that they created that matter. In the end, all we have is a few moments. Our brains are funny. You're not going to remember th seven words in a row I said tonight. Except for maybe those seven, because <laughs> be a wise ass about it. You're going to remember moments. So let's create some moments. Let's create some amazing moments for the human beings we live with, and also for the other organisms on the planet that we share this, our only home. Let's do that. Let's live here now. Let's live. Let's live now. Let's live here now. Is that such bad advice? That link I mentioned is the one shown on the screen. I have a few copies of my latest book, Going Dark. I practice and promote a gift economy, so if you want a copy of Going Dark, I have about 20 copies here. Don't act like a jerk and run over somebody and kick them out of the way to get it. You know, we just talked about that, didn't we? <laughs> so, so these, these are available. If you'd like to give me something back, I would accept fiat currency or any other gift. When I'm on college campuses, frequently students don't have a lot of money. So they give me a piece of art that they've done. Um, when I was on, in Winnipeg recently, a student comes up and she had been in South Africa the year before and she had a postcard and on that postcard, she had made paint out of sand and had painted this image from her trip to South Africa a year earlier. And she carried that with her everywhere. And that means way more to me than a $20 bill. I thought that was about the coolest thing ever. These books cost 20 bucks if you buy them from Amazon or the publisher, and they cost me about 15 bucks if you want to give me something. If you take one, by all means, give me to sign it for you. And throw your money up here and I won't even notice. <laughs> so if you want to learn more about my work, you can follow me at naturebaslastgabmcpherson.com and in particular, if you go to this essay, you can see all the links for the information I presented today. And there's a lot of questions about whether I'm presenting relevant information, so I would encourage you to go there. I think I'm among the people who really know what's going on. But maybe you can point out to me that I'm not. Thank you very much for your rapt attention. I would be glad to entertain questions at this point. Thank you very much.